B'shem Kol Yisrael. So I want to tell you guys an incredible story. Incredible is probably not even the right word. Um, it's a story about a shofar, about a ram's horn. So Rav Yitzchak Finkler was known as the Radochitzer Rebbe. And since he was the age of 20, he was elected to become the Rebbe of a city. And his father was a Rebbe. He was a very inspirational person. Everyone who, would come, who was around would come to listen to his words of Torah on Shabbat. And to watch him pray was just another world. And uh, one of his students is named Moshe Weintreder. And Moshe always looked up to the Rebbe. And then World War II broke out. And the Nazis, Yamach Shamam, started searching for the Jews. And both Moshe and Rav Yitzchak hid as much as they could using bribes, any way they could to survive. But in 1943, all of the Jews were rounded up. And somehow, Rav Yitzchak Finkler, the Radisha de Rebbe, and Moshe found themselves in the same work camp. They had been spared from extermination, but their lives weren't much better. And yet somehow, during this horrible, horrible time, the Rebbe was a beacon of light and of faith. He kept wearing tefillin, and he even organized minyanim, prayer quorum, shachris, minchan, marv, getting people to pray when the Nazis weren't looking. He was always speaking words of optimism, of faith, raising up the spirits of all those around him. And he even organized a way to have a bit of the four cups of wine through beet juice. Now 1943 came and Pesach was coming, Passover. I'm sorry, not Passover, Rosh Hashanah after Passover, and the Rebbe became obsessed with the idea he needed to get a ram's horn, he needed to get a shofar to blow it, to fill the mitzvah, to show his fellow inmates and the Nazis that nothing could vanquish the Jewish soul, that we would stay strong no matter what. So he took the diamonds and he bribed a Polish man who went and got him a horn, but the thing is that the horn that he gave back to him was an ox horn. An ox is not kosher to be a, a shofar. So he took the diamonds that was left and he again bribed him and he got a ram's horn. And he went to his student, his friend Moshe, and he said, Moshe, you're a metal worker. The Nazis, who knows what's going to be with them, but to you, I bless you. You will live if you make me a shofar for Rosh Hashanah. And Moshe said, Rebbe, if they catch me, they'll kill me. Of course they'll kill me if they see me working on a shofar. And Rebbe, I don't even know how to make a shofar. It's extremely complicated. I've never made a ram's horn into a shofar. And the Rebbe said, please, Moshe, I bless you that you will survive. Please make us a shofar. And Moshe looked at the Rebbe's eyes and says, Okay, Rebbe, I will try. And Moshe experimented with all his free time. In the middle of the night, he was drilling, making this shofar. Once, he was making the shofar and a Nazi walked in on him. And Moshe knew that it was over at that moment. And the Nazi asked, What are you doing? And Moshe said, I'm making a ram's horn for Rosh Hashanah. And the Nazi looked at him, and this Nazi happened to be a devout Christian. And he said, wow, okay. And he walked away. And Moshe kept working on his shofar. And in 1943 on Rosh Hashanah, in that camp in the middle of hell, that barrack blew the shofar. And somehow the Nazis did not hear and the Jews heard, and their spirit was lifted. It was an unbelievable history in the annals of all of mankind. Unfortunately, the Rebbe didn't make it out of the war, but Ramosha Weintrader 
kept that chauffeur as his prized possession and he would hide it with his toolbox wherever he went. But once the Nazis took him randomly without any warning to Buchenwald and the toolbox was left in the middle of nowhere, somehow Moksha Weintreter survived the war. After the war, he went to search back for the shofar and all it represented and the Rebbe, but he couldn't find it. Moshe ended up immigrating to the land of Israel. He changed his name, helped Jews escape into Israel, and he moved to Bnei Brak, but he never forgot about his shofar. He kept writing letters. Has anyone seen the shofar? In 1977, 30 years later, somehow, amazingly enough, someone heard about Moshe's search for the shofar, and actually the shofar was recovered. Moshe took back the shofar and donated it to Yad Vashem, where you can go and see that shofar to this day. When we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah, it begins with a smooth kia, just like the life of the Jews in Europe. It was smooth and straight and beautiful. But then the next thing is that we do a shvarim, unbelievable breaking pain that those Jews experience and that all of us experience sometimes in our lives. But we know how we end the Rosh Hashanah. We end with another Tkia. We know in the end, Bezrat Hashem, it will be straight. It will be good. May we all be blessed with a life of faith during all the dark times to hold strong to that shofar, to hold strong to that faith that it will all be good in the end as long as we cling to God. Have a beautiful day.